can't outrun me, Malcolm. I know this stadium like the back of my hand. Every single crack and crevice. There's nowhere to run. You weren't easy to find. It took me a long time to turn over that slimy rock under which you've been hiding. What the hell do you want from me? I need the name of your boss. It's Albert Campbell, manager of the student affairs office. No! I need the name of your steward at the Brotherhood of the Flaming Eye. Hell no. If I tell you that- They'll dispose of you, I know. I've read all about their alleged methods. Thrown into a wood chipper, tossed into a garbage compactor, pushed in front of a subway train. They have a lot of options, I'll give them that. But I don't care about you. I just need the name. Screw you, man! I don't! I've got all the time in the world, Malcolm. If you want this to go by a little bit faster, it's up to you. Just give me the name. Edmund Douglas, biology major. A financial assistant at the Natural Sciences Undergraduate Society. He's on medical leave now. He's managed to buy himself a fake mono diagnosis. He's actually in hiding. He's waiting for the whole Hannigan case to blow over. A word of advice. Make a run for it. Leave this town and don't ever come back. You're going to be spending the rest of your life looking over your shoulder. Everywhere you go. And it's not going to be pleasant. Not one bit. But then again, you should have thought about that a long time ago. Positions filmed, scrambling to carry out his old duties. That's a bitch. Yeah, tell me about it. But how about you? You said that you got that guy Malcolm's boss of the Brotherhood? Yep, Edmund Douglas. Ring a bell? Not really. Do you know where he is? He's into hiding, apparently. Waiting for the cops, students, everyone to just forget about Alex's murder and move on with their own lives. <laughs> Yeah, good luck with that. Well, do you know how you're going to find him? There's not much I can do apart from looking around campus, asking people if they have any information on him, scouting for clues in the ghetto, you know, the usual stuff. Well, don't worry. I'm sure you'll figure something out. Thanks. What about you? Do you have any information? Well. Remember that girl I told you about who saw Alex at Happy Howard's a few hours before you found his body? Yeah, of course I do. Well, it got me thinking. Logically, the next step would be to find out if anyone saw Alex earlier that day, before he got to Happy Howard's. So that's what I've been working on for the past few weeks. But it turns out there are more than a few people who've got something to say about his behavior that day. That's awesome. What did you find so far? I can't tell you just yet. My leads are still a bit slim, but as soon as I have something worth mentioning, I'll let you know. All right. Hey, Aaron, can I ask you something? Sure. If a lot of people out there know about this brotherhood, what with all the stuff the papers have been reporting and the police reports that have been filed over the years, why haven't they been caught yet? Isn't there enough material to prosecute those guys? Well. They're kind of like Cosa Nostra. People know what they are, but they don't really know who they are. The hood and the mask are identifiable, 
but not the faces behind them. I guess you have a point. And, um, there's something else that I've been meaning to ask you. What is it? I'm just dying to know. Where did you get all your detective training? Was your dad like a PI, or did you just read a lot of Arthur Conan Doyle in high school? <laughs> no, uh, actually I had an uncle at the VPD who used to employ me as his personal assistant over the summer. The whole idea was pretty unheard of, but with 30 years of impeccable service under his belt, the department allowed him to hire me. They even made the whole thing legitimate in front of the uh, Attorney General. Wow, that must be pretty exciting. To be honest, it was a little boring. The job was mostly filing papers and helping my uncle with his reports, but it did give me access to the department archives, which is where I spent most of my free time reading as much as I could about investigative practices. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I also accompanied my uncle on a few crime scenes where I closely observed how the cops would analyze the scene and collect evidence. But yeah, soon enough I really developed a knack for detective work. It drove me to acquire my own unique set of skills and even find my purpose in life. What purpose? To make a true impact in the world. A unique difference in the lives of others. And not live a meaningless, isolated life where I just end up alone and unfulfilled. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound so grim. No, it's okay. I've pretty much had the same thoughts since high school. I know what it's like to deal with all of this. Well, I, uh, I should get going. I've got class in like 10 minutes. Oh, okay. All right, uh, I'll see you later. Yeah, cool. stench about you, Edmund. You carry it in your path like the plague. I can't figure out why the Brotherhood made you a steward. Please, man. I can't take this anymore. I've been waiting outside in the cold for hours for you to come out of that fancy rat hole. I'm not leaving till I get what I want. What the hell do you want? The name of your Grand Master. No. I'd be high trees and if they find out they'll... Finish you off? Oh, I know. I've read their ammo. But I don't give a damn about you. People like you deserve to grovel in the dust, disappear in the dark. I'm going to ask you politely one last time. Who is your Grand Master? Uh, my heart... My, my, 
my heart. Thirty-five. Oh, one. Duke Street. I tell you, Haley, the way he died, all alone in that freezing alleyway without any dignity. I can't get that image out of my head. Hmm, but you got that address at least. Yep, 3501 Ducat Street. I'll have a go and look around tomorrow. Great, maybe you'll see their Grandmaster over there. Shoveling the sidewalk or something in his robe. <laughs> what have you figured out so far? Did you get any info on the, on the people who saw Alex before he died? Yeah, I got some pretty interesting results. All right, I'm listening. Well, they all had this to say about his behavior that day. It wasn't like anything they'd ever seen before. Now, if you'd known Alex, you'd remember him as a pretty calm guy, hardworking, but not too high strung, serious, but kind. But everyone who remembered seeing him that day said he looked like a total wreck. Really? Yeah. His roommate said he left the apartment in tears that morning. Someone in his Russian literature class said he wasn't even paying attention to the lecture at all, it just kept staring at his phone and wiping his eyes. There's a girl in Rising Voices he had a crush on. She told me that he gave her his watch as something to remember him by. Another girl said that she saw him down at Rowdy Richard's bar the night before, drowning his sorrows in cheap beer. So I went down there to check the register. He'd been there for three hours all by himself, gulping down one bottle after another, crying his eyes out. So my guess is he knew exactly what was going to happen in Dawson Alley and wasn't ready to accept it. Damn. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, it upset me too. But hey, at least he's in a better place now, right? Haley, I don't know if I should be telling you this, but I feel bad about involving you in this whole thing. I mean, the investigation must really be taking its toll on you. It's sure as hell taking its toll on me. It's been rough, I won't lie about it. But Aaron, I don't want you worrying about me. You've done nothing wrong, believe me. It was my decision to get involved in this investigation. Besides, I'm... I'm really glad to have you in my life right now. What are you doing? Uh, nothing. I... Uh, well, th that was... Uh, uh, Aaron, I... I... I've gotta go. You've gotta go now? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I've gotta go.
Hello? Hey, Haley. How's it going? Um, I don't know. Not so great. Listen, I wanted to apologize about the other day. I, uh, I guess I got scared, you know? No one's ever reached out to me like that before, and I didn't quite know what to make of it. But that's no excuse for my behavior, and I'm sorry. I, you're just gonna have to believe me, Haley. All right, I believe you. So I uh, also wanted to let you know that I'm onto something. Something huge. What is it? I know who the Grand Master is, Haley. Damn. Really? So, uh, can we meet later and talk about it? I'd really like to see you. Okay. Meet me at the terrace at McCarthy Engineering at 6. Yep, you got it. Talk to you later. Hey. Hey, Aaron. It's great to see you. Yeah, you too. So this uh, Grand Master, his name's Sol Buchanan. Have you heard of him before? Yeah, sure. I know about him. Star quarterback, VP external for the Young Entrepreneurs Initiative. He's a pretty popular guy, all right. Couldn't ask for a better front, huh? Did you find him at that place? What was it again? 3501 Duquette Street? Yeah. That's where the Brotherhood has been hiding and plotting this entire time. So... What's your next move? Well, I'm gonna go there first thing tomorrow morning. And I'll wait. I don't care if I have to skip a meal or a class or whatever. I'm just gonna wait until Saul comes out of that building. And once he's out on the street, that's when I'll swoop in and I'll... Haley. I had this roommate down at the student affairs office. They don't know who sent it to them. No return address either. What the hell is this? A message, I think. Alex said that meant on him when he died. This means that they know about me, about my investigation. God. I don't know how they managed to find out. I mean, maybe they have someone in Rising Voices, or, or maybe my roommate's one of them. Maybe they've managed to seep into every single corner of campus, blending in with all the other students. Well, Haley, I, Am I just I, another name on their hit list? Or, or are they just trying to mess with my mind the same way they did to Alex before they cornered him in that alley? Or am I just... <laughs> Too damn hard sometimes facing this cold world all by yourself. I know. <laughs> I know.
Man, I think I know who you are. You're Saul, right? Yeah. Uh, what can I do for you, pal? <laughs> oh, I just had a couple questions about membership. Membership? What are you talking about? You know, membership. I was wondering if you'd care to enlighten me, Saul. Or should I call you Grand Master? So you're the bastard who's been hunting down my men? Making them drop like flies? You have to answer, Saul. You have to answer for the murder of Alex Hannigan. You're the one who stabbed him, right? Damn right. I had the privilege of offering that bleeding heart sissy. Don't believe me, I enjoyed every second of it. But you'll be an even bigger victory. How fitting is this, huh? To end it here, right where we all started? Why the hell did you kill Alex? He was just becoming too much of a nuisance. You know, always sneaking around our lair, rummaging about for clues about our operations. You know, he thought it was his duty to bring people like us down. You know, that's one of the reasons he started his little liberals club. Was it the Rising Voices Committee or whatever? I mean, his sister wasn't too annoying. I mean, that is until recently. If you lay one finger on her. Oh, what are you gonna do, huh? Grab a banana peel from the garbage can, slide it on my feet? Life ain't a cartoon, pal, okay? Open up your eyes a little. People like you should all open their eyes a little bit. You guys are just incapable of understanding our mission, you know? You can't see the, the valor and dignity in our struggle. What the hell are you talking about? Well, you see, there's a reason why the Brotherhood was formed here. It's all about taking advantage of the new perspectives people discover in college. From the idealism of youth to the potency of adulthood. You know, we focus on this prime time to create honorable and long-lasting associations. Oh my god. You know, so you see, the old world order should never have been so drastically upheaved. Back then, society was governed by a predefined, fair, yet unchangeable set of principles. Values of, of social strength and weakness, of mastery and subjugation. And that is all until it was perverted by this new trend of, of deplorable crybaby sensibilities, you know? All run by these gay rights activists, all these mental weirdos, all these freaks who think they're the ones who should be ruling society. You're a lousy sack of shit. And so you see, Alex was just becoming a pain. You know, we had threatened to bump off his sister just to keep him quiet, just to get his nose out of his business. And he was like, oh, no, please, no. He was crying, he was begging, you know. He even offered for us to kill him instead of her, but I think it was more of a spur of the moment thing. I don't think he was mentally ready to sacrifice himself like that. But he saved her life with his own. I don't think she even knew about that. It's not going to matter anyway. We'll be disposing of her very soon. <laughs> Nolan? It's Aaron. Yep. Remember this guy I was talking to you about? 
this Grand Master, I got him in Dawson Alley. Don't worry, I'm sure he won't be leaving anytime soon. Listen, I need you to get over here and force a confession out of him. Anything goes. Thank you, my friend. Goodbye. It's over. Saul is finished. The Brotherhood is ruined. You're safe now. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, but where are you? Don't worry about me. I'm fine. But Rising Voices needs to be brought back onto its feet. Go do that. Keep making your own impact in this world. Aaron. I'll see you again, right? It's so beautiful up here, Haley. I wish you were here to see it. Thank you.